Okay, we're at the Science to Business Marketing Research uh, Conference in uh, Winter Tour, Switzerland, and we, we have the great pleasure of being here today with uh, Matthias Kaiserswert. He's the director of IBM Research Laboratory uh, in Zurich, in Switzerland. And we had a, a, an interesting presentation from Matthias, especially looking at the uh, the source of some of their innovations, the great innovations that are coming to uh, IBM. One of the questions that we had was um, when. When you have uh, science involved in IBM and it's a business side, um, you have these competing values, if you like. Um, how do you manage these competing values within a, a place like IBM? Because you obviously have scientists involved in, in what you're doing. Well, I think you need to find a, a real balance. Uh, I think um, the scientific aspect is extremely important because if you're not known for the science that you do, you will not attract uh, new scientists who want to join you. At the same time, um, the kinds of people that we attract are people that uh, want to make a name in, in the sci scientific world, but who want to have an impact uh, much more than they would have uh, if they stayed sort of in academia. And uh, that's the kind of environment we're trying to create. So I look at uh, people in terms of, uh, um, are they flexible? Because uh, clearly our directions do change. I mean, our industry is, is a very dynamic one. Um, so, whereas if they were in academia, you can stay in the same field forever. But at the same time, um, with that flexibility, um, are they also uh, willing to sort of stay in a field, um, publish, uh, get themselves known and, and, and really um, have the quality that uh, one would look for also in academia for, for outstanding scientists. So, um, I want, uh, I mean, I really look for the best uh, in, in, in terms of uh, what I have and, and the best like to work with the best. So in that sense, uh, it's a very attractive place for people then to come to. Okay, so in that sense, you're self-selecting the researchers that might come into the Institute, but you also want them publishing or pursuing the scientific side. Yes, um, because as I said, it's, it's extremely important uh, to be known uh, for that uh, the fact that uh, all the, our technology is science-based uh, and if you really want to also work with academia then at eye level and not just uh, take things from academia and uh, which you don't fully understand maybe even, um, it, it's not going to be good and, and if you want to work with them at eye level then, uh, then they need to respect you for the science that you do and that's why you also have to have um, activities that um, are at par with what they do in academia. Okay, IBM has for a long time been famous for its innovation and I can imagine that predominantly that's coming out of a research background. So within the corporation itself, how important is science? How is it perceived? I think uh, IBM looks at itself as a really uh, company that has technology at its heart. And uh, as I said, I mean, all technology is in some form or other uh, science driven. Um, and in fact, uh, even things like services, if you want, is, is also science driven these days. It's, uh, um, in fact, IBM established something called service science management and engineering as a, as a discipline. Um, I mean, we came up with that name and, and uh, some universities, uh, in fact, quite a few universities now pick this up offering master's programs that's a, um, sort of a combination of uh, people doing, um, having a, s some specialization in, in, in a scientific field, engineering, so it could be electrical engineering or computer science, uh, plus, um, um, or mechanical engineering, plus uh, sort of uh, the, the um, um, what you require for an MBA uh, type, sort of the business background, uh, and, uh, and some element even of social sciences uh, along the lines of uh, what motivates people and uh, how do you build systems of people. And uh, that leads to the service science management and engineering. So you can really uh, engineer services. Uh, you can then understand how to manage services. And that's an area where we also do research, not in, in Zurich, but in, in our US labs, uh, uh, very extensively and so it's also science-based. Okay, you mentioned also in your uh, in your talk um, you were talking about the open innovation phenomenon and how you try to balance that between your own IP. How much of that is interdisciplinary and how do you manage that? Well I think increasingly things do become interdisciplinary um, because uh, um, they get 
to be so complex that you need to need more people that uh, bring the prerequisite skills uh, to the table to actually solve the problem. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, uh, we came up with this uh, technology called Watson, which uh, was the computer that won at uh, Jeopardy, this American TV quiz game against the two human opponents. Um, now, clearly, uh, that is technology in natural language understanding, machine learning, uh, big data analytics, um, um, statistical um, engines that uh, that learn, and and so it's a computer that learned and it wasn't really programmed uh, uh, with the answers. It, it it learned as it played the game. You know what the kind of answers are. Now we're at the point, of course, uh, you know, playing quiz shows is not a business. Uh, um, we're at a point where we want to use it for uh, for things that are actually useful for, for mankind. And one of the areas we find that is data rich, where this type of technology comes in well, is in medicine. And in particular in, in cancer diagnosis and cancer treatment, um, where you have uh, tremendous complexities in, in terms of treatment options. Uh, and in fact, uh, a lot of people talk about personalized medicine where lots and lots of data needs to be understood and, and analyzed. And this is not something we can do ourselves because we don't have the medical profession in, in, in our ranks. Uh, we don't have uh, access to the data. So we do this with partners that are basically jointly with us. Uh, I mean, they teach the system and we tweak the system so it learns uh, uh, problems in that domain and and so for this is it's a really interdisciplinary problem solving uh, group uh, computer scientists uh, um, mathematicians uh, chemists even because we need, needed to teach the computer chemistry um, plus uh, people doctors uh, to basically uh, help the computer learn learn the problems in 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 in, in cancer and uh, so that's uh, one example where things, these things come together and now it's actually in, in productive use in, in, in uh, first uh, clinics in the US. I mean, it's interesting for our viewers, perhaps many of them would be hearing you talk about the medical industry and they'd be saying, oh, hang on, IBM in the medical industry, but you talk about big data, uh, big data. Big data. Um, how important, is that gonna allow you to go across all industries, do you think? I think uh, data actually has become the new natural resource. Some people call it uh, the, the new the oil of the 21st century. Um, I think uh, we live in an extremely exciting time where that's data rich. I mean, we have sensors throughout. We have machines uh, look at DNA sequencing. I mean, it's becoming really affordable that you can do this uh, for every everybody, basically. Um, and uh, it allows you then to uh, gain insights that you weren't able to have before. And um, so this type of uh, what we call big data in our industry enables entirely new things across many different industries um, where you bring together sort of the, the big data aspect with the data that uh, companies already or clinics or whoever what the, that they already have in, in their systems of record. And by combining these, you create really what we call systems of insight um, that uh, if you really exploit these well can give you either competitive advantage or make things just better. We're talking, it's, it's really interesting discussion, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, we talked off camera just quickly about your, collab you call it a radical collaboration with the Swiss Federation, uh, Federal Institute of Technology, which is ETH Zurich. Um, what makes it radical and uh, what's, what's it involved? It was a really interesting uh, collaboration. I think uh, at least for Switzerland, and I believe also for Europe, it's, it's truly a unique uh, thing. Unlike uh, what some companies do, they sponsor a building at a university or so, um, but they um, don't have much to do other than having their name on the building. Uh, in, in our case, we basically said, uh, well, we both have a need, which was uh, to do nano nanoscience research and so for that you need a clean room and, and you need noise-free labs and uh, all sorts of other types of labs uh, and and um, and we both wanted equipment that neither of us could really afford in, in the amount of time that um, you know to get the money for, for this so we decided to really uh, join forces and, and do this uh, together and so we created uh, um, on our campus, actually the IBM campus, we, we put up a new building, which is uh, an extension of the ETH campus as well. 
um, that uh, is now occupied by four professors with their staffs. Uh, and it has uh, research facilities, very expensive research facilities, uh, to the tune of more than $30 million in investment in, in just the equipment uh, that both parties uh, use uh, um, at the same time if you want, uh, and, and uh, they can use as much as they want. Uh, of course, you pay for the use then, but uh, um, it is something where we can then conduct projects of our own with equipment we couldn't afford. They can do the same thing on their own. We can do it jointly. They can bring other partners. We can bring other partners. So in that sense, it's truly a, a platform on which we can uh, experiment uh, uh, really new models of collaboration between academia and industry. Uh, I, I've got m thousands of questions I could be asking you, but I think we're going to have to uh, uh, wrap it up. But I have one more question just in respect to looking ahead um, for perhaps on the university side. So this collaboration that you're talking about, uh, that you've just discussed, d is this the future for universities? Do you see this more integrated collaboration with business? Is this where universities might be needing to go? In my mind, yes. I mean, if, if I were a university administrator, I think it would make the university a lot more competitive, even if they, within their own walls, uh, worked a little bit more interdisciplinary. Um, but certainly, I think... Um, they could benefit a great deal, both industry and the universities, uh, by uh, having having more collaboration with one another. So yes, I think uh, this this holds actually true for all fields. I mean, when you think of the what people call e-humanities or digital humanities, uh, it's again a big data problem uh, these days, and you can apply again technology um, to um, c gain insights, sort of in, in history, in social sciences, whatever. Um, and it requires collaboration across uh, the disciplines. Uh, you need uh, linguists, you need computer scientists, uh, all sorts of people that, uh, that need to work with one another.